Yo, it's you again. Welcome back. I'm guessing you're here because you want to learn how to draw different body types for your characters. Yes. In this week's episode of YouTube Art School, I'll show you how to draw a variety of body types and what makes them work, but also what to avoid to make sure that your characters remain aesthetic. It's gonna be epic. Uh oh, class is starting. Let's go. Classes in session. Pay attention. Drawing characters with average proportions is usually what I prefer and what I teach because you always want to start learning the baseline first. But what if you want to draw characters that are different? Taller, maybe? Shorter? Skinnier? Curvier? Stumpier? Fatter? Unless you follow some proportion guidelines and understand how fat reserves and muscles get bigger or smaller as you deviate from average proportions, your characters will likely just look kind of bad. But stick around for the next couple of minutes and you'll know exactly what to do to draw any body type aesthetically. Talking about average, here's what we're going to start with. Most people don't look like that, to be fair. It's an idealized body, but it's average based on the others that we'll see today. Actually, no, it's not. I lied. These are all what I would consider average bodies. I usually consider there are five main body types. These are all females, obviously, but I look at males the exact same way. Male characters just don't get views on my channel, so blame the algorithm. So what I started with here, we can call the hourglass body shape. A narrow waist paired with shoulders and hips of similar width. The other one here, I was kind of struggling to find a name for it, so I ended up just calling it the stick figure. I guess that's what my body type is like. Distinguishable features here will be the narrow shoulders and hips with an average waist size. Kind of looks like a stick. Not the sexiest name for it, but it doesn't mean that it can't be a super aesthetic figure like me. <laughs> <laughs> the next body type is the top heavy one. This time we'll figure wide shoulders relative to the hips and the waist. You'll see a lot of basketball players with that body type, women included. It doesn't have to be taller than the others. I was just thinking of athletes when I drew this. The fourth body type I'm going to call blocky, shaped like a rectangle. This time we have wide shoulders, wide waist and hips, usually with thick limbs as well. Just build stronger overall, you know? And then finally, the last type I consider is the bottom heavy body with most of the weight accumulating around the glutes and the legs, but with an otherwise average upper body. Some people call it pear shaped, but I've never really liked the fruits comparison. I think these simple shapes show the diversity a lot more clearly, especially when we overlay those shapes on top of the bodies. Ooh. Now then, there's a lot more variety than that once we add three modifiers. Think of a game character creator, maybe. You selected the main body type and now we get to customize it. Specifically, with these three attributes, like I said, height, fat, and muscle size. Before we look at what that might look like and all the new body types that we can derive from that, let's backpedal for a second and take a quick look at what makes the base body types work in the first place. Proportions. It always starts with proportions. In my art program, as well as in many videos here on the channel, I always emphasize proportions because it's the first thing that will make or break a character. Take her, for example. Not too hard on the eye, but the second that I mess up her proportions, ooh, she turns into this cursed creature and now the character isn't nearly as aesthetic, to say the least. Characters will usually start between seven to eight heads tall. That's like a model ratio, you know, like ideal. And well, the head will usually stay the same regardless of their body type, which is why we use that as a unit of measurement, right? Just because you're more muscular or fatter doesn't mean that your skull size will change. It's pretty universal, even between tall and short people. Now, anyways, still about proportions, I like to place the middle of the body right around the crotch of the character. For an eight heads tall character, the legs would be four heads tall, with the crotch placed in the center, vertically. Most people have shorter legs than that, but these proportions also do exist, and I'd argue are more aesthetically pleasing, at least I think. But more important than that, it's easier to remember when drawing characters. Just half the full height of any character. Proportion-wise, it's also important to have arms that are long enough. Think of it this way, all your characters should be able to cup and protect their private parts in case someone tries to kick them. That means making sure that the arms are long enough. Uh, that's gonna be crucial. Short arms will make any character look silly. You can actually go pretty long though. You know, let's say you have some monster type of character. Well, that might not be realistic, but it won't break the character. Usually. Longer arms mean longer legs too. Limbs, hands, and feet tend to mirror each other. So short arms, short legs, 
smaller hands and feet. I think it's common knowledge, but just in case, long arms, long legs, large hands and feet usually go well together. You can always break that rule though, many cartoon characters do, it's just a starting point. And this is just an overview, but for more details on body proportions, I actually have a class that goes into this a lot more, so I'll link that in the video description if you're interested. And then for a super deep dive on the body and many other art topics like colors, shading, perspective, composition, storytelling, design of characters, props, environments, animals and creatures, mechs, and a whole lot more. Make sure that you check out the Art School program for digital artists. It's a complete art education from the comfort of your home that takes your hand through all of the content week by week. It's the most popular art program in the world. Now, thanks to all of you who's joined so far, can't thank you enough. And there's a huge back to school sale going on right now. So check it out with the link in the video description and join our awesome community of artists. What are you waiting for? All right, now let's have some fun and customize those base body types, shall we? Like I said, we have three attributes that we can modify them with, which would give us a total of well over a hundred different body types if I drew them all, so that's not happening. But I'll apply each of those three attributes to two body types each to see what that might look like, starting with the height. Height is the easiest and most forgiving attribute, I'd say. The only thing we gotta keep in mind to sell the effect is to maintain the head size, but everything else can stretch pretty evenly. So to get this body type here, I just used the hourglass base type and stretched it to make it taller. She looks like she's got a small head now, but that's actually how you can tell she's really tall. If her head scaled along with the rest of the body, she would just look average, especially if she wasn't part of this lineup. Now let's do it again with the blocky body type. Here too, I'll just cut the head off that sounds kind of bad, but if I scale the body up and put the head back on, well, she looks massively tall and still blocky, but it works. So just keep that in mind. The head size doesn't scale or very little compared to the rest of the body. That's really all you got to remember here. Next, let's move on to the muscle attribute and we'll keep the extra curves for last. Let that dough rise, you know what? Muscles are the hardest attribute to get right. Let's just get that out of the way first. It requires a lot of anatomy knowledge, which is why I flex it every chance I get short of having actual muscles myself. But to help with getting to know the muscles though, I uploaded a class just recently that goes over the entire body, looking at all the important muscles, which should be relevant here. You should definitely check it out with the link in the description below. When we talk about muscle growth, the arms and the shoulders will usually grow a lot more compared to the rest of the body. Same with the glutes and the thighs. The rest, however, will kind of just get more shredded, not balloon in size as much as these other muscle groups. Here, I use the hourglass body type as my starting point so you can see what I mean. Bigger arms and shoulders, bigger legs, mostly, you know, it almost adds an hourglass effect to most body type. If I do it again with the stick figure body type, even if I'm careful not to make another hourglass figure, by default, it always kind of goes toward that a little bit. Shoulders are just a little bit more compact here. The skeleton is narrower, so it'll prevent the shoulders from getting as wide as in the first example. But that's about it. So it still kind of looks different. And I guess that's the main thing here. Those initial five body types, they're really skeleton frames. Some characters have thicker bones overall, others have wider hips, and others have wide shoulders. The attributes that we're playing with here can change that a bit, but the base body types really give us the main direction that we can take the characters. So anyways, now let's check out the last attribute, fat, to see how that plays into everything. First, male and female fat distribution is typically quite different. Female fat distribution looks like this for the average woman, most of it will accumulate around the hips and the thighs, some around the upper arms and inner thighs, and some around the belly. But then for males, it looks more like this. Just imagine that this is a male character for a second. Mm, looks good. Most of the fat will accumulate around the belly first, and then a little bit around the glutes. Of course, if the character is really obese, male or female, fat will cover most of the body. It's not like it'll only accumulate in those areas, but comparatively, a lot more will accumulate there. Again, this is just an average. Not all characters need to follow this guideline, but it's a great starting point. Anyways, now what happens when we make a top heavy female character fat? That's a bit of a tricky one since, you know, like I said, women tend to get bottom heavy as they get fatter, but the base body type also has a lot of influence on what's gonna happen. So I think it works pretty well when we do half and half. Add some fat around the hips and thighs, and then add a little bit more than the hourglass figure had around the top of the body, since, well, she's supposed to be wider up top. And uh, we get something like this. Could be a lumberjack, I guess. Or is it called a lumberjill? Who knows? Kind of an odd mix of body types and attributes, but I guess it still kind of works. The next one we'll do, though, 
is one I consider a great fit for a cool figure. Let's fatten up the bottom heavy type this time. Like we saw, the fat will mostly accumulate around the legs and the glutes, a little on the belly and some around the arms, and this is what we get here. I soften all of the anatomy definition, like the muscles in the neck, the clavicles, and soften the lines overall, since, uh, well, fat deposits itself over the muscles and tend to hide them. Now, this is pretty extreme, but still, aesthetically speaking, it kind of works pretty well. As long as you keep this in mind when drawing fat characters, it should work pretty well as well for yours. Now, of course, I only use one attribute at a time, but you could use more than one. For example, a taller, muscular, top-heavy character. Have some fun with it. Drawing a variety of characters like this is a blast, especially when you have these guidelines to give you a solid direction. And well, I hope that was helpful. Let me know in the comments. Now, personally, I'm a stick body type with some muscle. What's your body type and attributes? Dare to share. And by the way, I'll add this lineup image to my exercise files that you can grab for free on my QBrush store in case it helps. You can also get the brush that I use for today's drawings as part of my custom brush set, also available for download in my store for free. Check it out. I'll see you next week.